All right, continuing with a similar example as we did in the last video. Here's our quadratic. Standard form. We're going to need to know what A is throughout this. B is pretty clearly minus 4. C is 5. Since there's no number, it's 1. A is equal to 1. Because 1 times anything doesn't change anything. So for part A, we want to know does the parabola open up or does it open down? And as before, it all depends upon A, whether A is positive or whether A is negative. And since A is 1, it's positive or greater than 0, which means this graph opens up. B asks for the vertex, so we're going to need the formula that h, the x-coordinate of the vertex, is minus b over 2a. So in our case, b is a minus 4, a is 1, as we mentioned earlier. So this is minus a minus 4 over 2 or minus a minus 2, which is a long way of saying 2. Then to get k, the y-coordinate of the vertex, we plug 2 back into the function. So this is 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 5. Well, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. And 5 stays as it is for the moment. 4 minus 8 is minus 4. Adding 5 to minus 4 leaves us with 1. So our vertex is the point 2, comma, 1. The x-coordinate of the vertex is h. The y-coordinate of the vertex is k. So, that was the answer A, that's the answer B. Let's write up C. The ac oh, yeah, axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is just x equals h. Nothing much to say here. Just x equals h, and h, in our case, is 2. So it's the vertical line, x equals 2. In part D, we are looking at intercepts. And if you prefer, you know, you can do the y-intercepts first, which will invariably be easier. So we're going to set x equal to 0 and find y. There we go. So, letting x be 0, we get 0 squared minus 4 times 0 plus 5. So that's 0 minus 0 plus 5. 0 minus 0 is 0, and 0 plus 5 is 5. So y equals 5 is our y-intercept. Now for the x-intercept, this is the tricky part. This, unlike our last example, is not going to factor. And trying to solve 0 equals x squared minus 4x plus 5 by factoring is going to be pointless. And in fact, I would say, again, quadratic formula is going to be too tedious. Oops, find x. But that's merely my opinion. If you prefer, stick with quadratic formula. But I think using the fact that we have the vertex form, a times x minus h, so in our case that's x minus 2, square that, and then add k, 
oops, that's k in general. For us, k is 1 at the moment, but in general. Now all we do is we solve, we start by isolating the square, which means moving the plus 1, or subtracting 1 from both sides. And I can get rid of the 1 times, because 1 times anything is just itself. Now that the square is by itself, it's really convenient to take square roots of both sides, because the square root will get rid of the square on the right hand side. And right away you might see a problem, that this is a square root of a negative. But as we saw in P5, square root of minus 1, we're now just calling i. So we can solve this if we work in complex numbers. So we're going to add 2 to both sides, and we have 2 x-intercepts. x equals 2 plus i, and x equals 2 minus i. Now, these are nowhere on the real axis. They're not, or rather, they're not on the x-axis. The x-axis only contains real numbers. So we won't be plotting these. In other words, our graph, our parabola for part E, is not going to cross the x-axis at all. It opens up it sits on the point 2, 1. So it's never, it's moving away from the x-axis. So it's never going to touch the x-axis. It will not have real roots or intercepts, or x-intercepts, that is. It does have complex ones, but no real ones, which is what's reflected on the graph. Now let's see. We saw 2, 3, 4, 5, and by symmetry, because x equals 2 is the axis of symmetry, this point, 0, 5, is 2 to the left of the axis, so if we go 2 to the right at that same height, we should have another point on the parabola, which just helps us get a bit more accurate graph. That's all. So you can put this as your answer for part D, or you can say, as the book does, that there are no real roots or no real x-intercepts. Either way is fine.